When it comes to tracking ovulation and the fetal window when trying to conceive with PCOS, it can be frustrating and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's not, but I'm here to tell you that there's a way. Because unlike many people think, women with PCOS can conceive. They ovulate from time to time, maybe not as frequent, but they can, even if it happens very late in the cycle. So in this video, I'll be explaining how fertility awareness can help, very specifically, um, the symptothema method of fertility awareness. Women with PCOS can have cycles as long as 50, 60, or even 90 days. So it's possible to ovulate on the 40th day, 48th day, or even the 70th day in the cycle. Nothing close to the 14th day as seen in articles and videos. I know it's very unpredictable, but you can figure it out. Hello, my name is Stephanie Young, and I am an internationally certified women's holistic hormone health practitioner. And in this video, in addition to telling you how to time ovulation and sex when trying to conceive with PCOS, I'll be showing you how a PCOS client of mine got pregnant using this method, so watch until the end. Number one, understand the cervical mucus pattern. It's ideal to get more dry days than wet days. In other words, the days where you don't see fetal cervical mucus or any kind of wet cervical mucus at all are way more than the days when you see fetal cervical mucus aka egg white or watery and sometimes creamy in a regular cycle. So a regular cycle will have dry mucus from after the period, then sticky for a few days before it starts to get wetter, as in the creamy like lotion and then clearer, slippery like the egg white or watery just before ovulation. And after ovulation, because of the progesterone hormone, the cervical mucus dries up or in some women become sticky before drying up. It's not exactly the same for women with PCOS. Women with PCOS experience multiple days of wet and fertile cervical mucus from time to time because of the high estrogen hormone. The body tries to ovulate, but because of hormonal imbalance, it is not successful. So you might have three days of fertile cervical mucus here, another four days there, you know, days or even weeks apart. So you have to treat each and every time you experience this like it's your fertile window and begin to have sex. Take time out every day to check for cervical mucus, not when you're in a rush to pee. Wash your hands before you check. Some ladies are lucky enough, it comes out and you can even see it on your panties, right? Then others have to insert their fingers all the way. So rub between your fingers and attempt to separate them. Does it stretch? Is it wet? Wipe with tissue from front to back. Does it slide through easily? Is the vulva slippery? If it does, then take this as your fetal time, no matter how many times it happens in your cycle. Number two, use your cervical position too. In fertility awareness, checking this fertility sign is optional, but you can't afford to leave it out because you need as much information about your fertility as you can get. Once you pass the vaginal canal, next stop is your cervix, you can feel it. Your cervix moves around during your cycle. You know, when you're not fertile, your cervix is firm, low, closed, and dry. As you approach ovulation, it gets soft, high, open, and wet. It's actually at its highest during ovulation. Now, it goes with the knuckle roll. Insert the index finger. How many knuckles go in before you touch the cervix? Is it just the first? Does it get up to the second knuckle or the third? You have to start at the beginning of your cycle so you can tell the difference when you get to that point of peak fertility. How do I know what to feel or what does it feel like? Now let's practice. Touch the tip of your nose. That's what a firm cervix feels like. And then touch the tip of your lip. That's what a soft cervix feels like. Three, your basal body temperature. Another fertility sign is very important. Actually the most important if you ask me. Now it's your body's temperature at complete rest. You check with a the thermometer every morning when you wake up, an oral thermometer, and then you chart the reading. That's the figure you get, either on a pen and paper chart or on a fertility awareness app. This is what it would look like. After ovulation, your basal body temperature goes up and stays up until the start of your next period. So before ovulation, it is low, set of low temperatures. Now these one to three marked up here are the three days with high temperatures to confirm ovulation that is after ovulation so while the other fertility signs are telling you ovulation is likely so you can treat as a fetal window like i've just taught you since the beginning of this video 
this is the only sign that can confirm that you have actually ovulated when you have at least two high temperatures higher than the previous five. Your setting ovulation has occurred then. And then you've made love in the fertile window that is days before ovulation. So you can take a break from love making, no more pressure, and then you wait for two weeks. Are you still with me? We have one more sign to look out for, but before then, I'd like you to know that the fertility awareness method isn't difficult, trust me. Once you start, it becomes a habit and you get used to it. My book, How to Get Pregnant Faster, explains all the fertility signs in details tips to make checking easier for you and how to interpret the signs. It's cool if you want to begin to try this out on your own using the information in this book. Many women have gotten pregnant this way. But if you feel like you need the one-on-one -on -one support, the community and the step-by-step -step videos, my short course, Track Your Cycle to Conceive, will be perfect for you. Details are in the description. So the next sign is the luteinizing hormone, right? So luteinizing hormone testing is very important. You see, I didn't start with this because the first three signs I talked about would be more accurate. Because women with PCOS have high levels of the luteinizing hormone. You may test and get multiple positives at different points in your cycle. You may also get a lot of negatives. And when you begin to time sex following these results, it can be tiring and then frustrating when you don't fall pregnant at the end of the cycle. So here are my tips if you do intend to use ovulation strips as a woman with PCOS. 1. Buy the cheap ones because you need a lot. The ones that show lines so you are able to see the difference. You know, like the line is darker today than it was yesterday. So my LH is rising rather than those that just tell you positive or negative. 2. Start testing only when you see fetal cervical mucus, not cycle day 12 like in most articles and videos, because they assume ovulation happens on day 14, which is not the case for you. If not, you'll end up spending so much on strips and either getting multiple negatives for a long time or even multiple positives because you have steady levels of high luteinizing hormone. Continue testing when you get a positive until you get a negative test. And then next up, the star of the show is lovemaking. How often do you need to have sex? So like I promised at the beginning of the video, I'll be showing you how a PCOS client of mine got pregnant using the cycle tracking information in our TTC diary and menstrual cycle charts. So here it is. She noticed egg white from cycle day 12 up until cycle day 14. And then here she started to make love on cycle day 11 up until cycle day 13. Right? She had tested using her LH strips and she got a positive on cycle day 12 but afterwards she got negatives negative negatives up until cycle day 21 and you can see from the top here there was no temp shift so she was sure she hadn't ovulated right and then we come here again to cycle day 26 where she got egg whites for two days um, of egg whites you can see that the position of her cervix also shifted to the middle and she had sex on cycle day 26, 27, and 28. When she tested on cycle day 26, she had a negative, a positive the next day, and a negative um, afterwards. There was no stem shift still, so she knew she didn't ovulate yet. And then we go all the way to cycle day 37. So she had a bit of creamy that day and egg white as well. She had sex and in that period and then the next day where she had a lot more um, egg white she had a population test and she had positive that day and positive the next day that was cycle day 38 and 39 right you can see she took advantage of it having sex from cycle day 37 up until cycle day um, 40. now right here you can see she had a temp shift on cycle day 40. she had the first high temperature higher than the previous temperatures the next day, which was cycle day 41, she also had a high temperature, cycle day 42, the same thing. So this right here confirms to her that she had ovulated. So now let's go back to cycle day 26, which was here. So if you look at cycle day 26, you see she had um, pre ovulatory temperatures quite alright. The next day, she had a high temperature, which was higher than you know, previous five. She could have thought that to be ovulation, right? Coupled with the fact that her cervix even shifted. Even if it wasn't all the way up, you know, it was a bit high. But her temperature came down the next day, which meant that she did not ovulate. So that was how she knew that 
she haven't ovulated in this time that she hadn't ovulated yet so now after confirming ovulation right you start counting um first this is cycle day 40 right which is day one of the luteal phase one day after ovulation and then she just begins to count now when she got to five days post ovulation she had a pregnancy test here and it was negative but it was still too early to test so i told her to hold on a bit and then she continued to count days post ovulation and then when it was day 11 after ovulation which was cycle day 50 she had a pregnancy test again which came back positive so this works this method works now see she also had sex other days even when she didn't see um fetal quality certificate of fluid but she made it a point of duty to always have sex at the time where she saw fetal cervical mucus right so she took advantage of the days before ovulation and um, the day of ovulation so here you can see she also had sex on the day where she had you know her first temperature shift right cycle day 40 she had sex which was the morning after ovulation charting your fertility signs is key it helps you narrow down the fetal window ovulation lasts for just 12 to 24 hours so your chances are higher when you have sex just before this way there's sperm waiting for the egg immediately it drops it also gives hope so what do i mean if you used to ovulate very late in the cycle, say cycle day 35 or 40 for example, but now with supplementation and an adjusted diet, you can see from your chart that you're now ovulating on day 30, which is way earlier, right? That's a win. So you're able to appreciate the little changes that you get towards achieving your goal rather than being frustrated, thinking nothing is working and giving up totally. Which brings me to a very important aspect of getting pregnant with PCOS. Supplementation and diet is very important alongside exercises and stress management. So I have previous videos I did where I talked about the different types of PCOS and how to know which you have and the treatment. There's also another one that tells you the test to do to confirm that it's indeed PCOS because many women have been misdiagnosed. I'll link them in the description. I'll leave the links right there in the description. 70% of women with PCOS have the insulin resistant type, meaning that you have no choice but to balance your blood sugar and insulin levels, so you have to eat right. I have a free guide and meal plan, mostly Nigerian meals you can start with if you feel restricted with food choices and are mostly confused on what to eat to improve your PCOS symptoms. Link is in the description or just below this video. So supplements also help a lot, I mean if your insulin levels continue to be high, your body will continue to produce testosterone which will stop you from ovulating so taking supplements to improve your insulin sensitivity in order to aid ovulation is very important there's another video that talks about supplements that help resume ovulation depending on the reason for not ovulating in the first place i'll link it in the description yes so adjusting your diet and taking supplements to aid ovulation and then charting your fertility signs correctly to narrow down the fertile window and time sex right is how you get pregnant with PCOS. All the resources I mentioned so far are in the description below. Hope to speak with you soon. In my next video, I'll be talking about how to know if you're ovulating and this is whether or not you have PCOS. So be sure to subscribe so you know when it drops. Cheers.